faculty and students across the university in all units. Uh, and we have around 45 or so uh, faculty that have already been involved in one way or another with the center and giving us a lot of energy and a lot of opportunity to, ex to explore our different perspectives. The center has just recently uh, put out a call for research proposals which will encourage interdisciplinary collaboration and it is our hope that the proposals that are funded will then result in further funding from external sources. In addition to the research component, the center will have a teaching component both for Mason undergraduates, it will have a credit, non-credit, we envision some university life initiatives, and hopefully we'll be having a living learning community in 2010. We also hope to have an international perspective and become a global center to represent Mason and the good things that we're doing here in an innovative way. And uh, we'll be having conferences with the hope of having our first international summit in 2010. So we have a full agenda. It's challenging, but it's fun, and we have a lot of energy and a lot of people who have participated in this. On the tables, I will note there's a one-page description of the center, which also gives you contact information if you want to uh, get in touch with us. If you don't want it, and there's an extra one at your table, please feel free to share it with someone else that might be interested in our activities. There are also some contact cards on the table, so that if, I think most of you are probably on our list already, but if you aren't, or if you're not sure you aren't, uh, please fill it out and we'll put you on our contact list. Again, if you have someone that you know would like to be interested or involved with the center, please feel free to share one of the contact cards. We're really looking forward to the opportunities to um, get out and talk to people about the center. So if you have any questions, if you want us to come and talk to 
uh, people in your departments or units, uh, please feel free to contact us at any point in time. And at this, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Dr. Nance Lucas, who is the Associate Dean for New Century College, which is where the Center for Consciousness and Transformation is actually housed. Nance? moment in all of our lives as we celebrate Don and Nancy Delasky's generous gifts. We're receiving two gifts from Don and Nancy, a gift from them externally and a gift from within them. It's both Don and Nancy's financial gift and equally important, the gift of how they live their lives that we're recognizing today. Their financial gift allows us to establish a world-class center devoted to the study and practice of consciousness and transformation. The gift of their character, authenticity, and humility is shaping our vision of this center. And with that in mind, we intend to reach 10 million people in 10 years from every continent through our work. We live in a world that undoubtedly will benefit from the center devoted to the topics of consciousness and transformation as people are searching and yearning for greater meaning and well-being in their lives. When I first met Don and Nancy in December of 2007, I knew I was in the company of two great human beings. Their altruistic acts have made a difference in thousands of people's lives, many of whom they've never met. So we're fortunate to be in their presence today and to know them as friends and as supporters of our university community. Now, I'll never forget the twinkle in Don's eyes during a lunch conversation when he leaned over toward me and proudly proclaimed that he believes in angels. <laughs> And he kept that same warm expression when I responded back and said that I too believe in angels, except that I don't study them. <laughs> in less than seven months from that moment, we gathered again, and this time in a meeting room in Mason Hall. Don and Nancy just received our proposal to establish the new center. And when I asked them what they thought, Nancy beamed with excitement by responding that this was their dream and their passion, their life's work. So I'm honored to say now that this is our collective dream. Many hands at the university touched the beginnings of our new center over the last year and a half with a list too long to name each individual. But I want to thank all of the faculty and staff from over 15 programs and departments on campus who supported the proposal for this new interdisciplinary center. I'm grateful for the guidance and leadership of our provost, Peter Stearns, and Jack Sensor, Dean of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. And I thank my colleague in the development office, Rick Virgin, who immediately saw the inherent value of this new center and worked closely with all of us to make this a reality. And I just learned today that Rick is celebrating his one year anniversary at George Mason University. I extend a heartfelt thank you to my talented and dedicated colleagues, Lois Tetrick, Mark Thurston, and Stacy Gunther. I so admire your devotion to the center's mission and for all of your leadership in the center's new beginnings. Your energy and your enthusiasm are contagious. <laughs> Don and Nancy, on behalf of my colleagues in New Century College and the university community, we thank you for the gift of who you are and for making our collective dream possible. It's my pleasure to introduce President Alan Merton, whose leadership of George Mason University is a tribute to establishment of our new center. Dr. Merton, we thank you for your encouragement we were, when we were in the idea stages of the center. We're grateful for all that you've done to make this happen. Thank you, Nance. Thank you, Lois. I often comment that part of George Mason University that keeps me going, that excites me every day, the faculty and the students. 
And today, one more, uh, one more moment to say that listening to Lois and listening to Nance reminds me why I believe this is an incredible place to be. Today is a day when we have an opportunity to honor Don and Nancy for all that they have done, not just for George Mason University, but far beyond. Their commitment to Northern Virginia, their commitment to the greater Washington area, their commitment far beyond has made a difference in so many people's lives. And as Nance said, it's not just what they do, but actually it's more important how they do it. It's the how that makes us all excited when we're with them. As some of you know, I don't like to read from scripts, but I had a problem today. I had to, was asked to list the number of things that the Delaskis have done for George Mason University, and I couldn't remember them all. So here we go. <laughs> Their contributions in so many ways, the Performing Arts Building, the George Mason Dance Program, the Mercatus Center, the Early Identification Program, Potomac Music Academy, the Arts Festival, the Associated Writing and Dow Program, Arts by George, and a new Performing Arts Building for which we'll be breaking ground this spring. These are the things they have done for us, they have done with us. These are the things that are going to allow us, now along with the center, to make the progress and to touch people's lives in a way that, that we, we want to, that we have, and we want to continue to do. When you look at the idea for the center, and I remember I'm coming this from a perspective of an engineer, mathematician, computer scientist, how, how do I summarize? I summarize what the center is up to. It's in two businesses. It's in the thinking business, and it's in the doing business. And it's the combination of its emphasis on helping people learn how to think about things, but not just think about them, how to do it. It's in the thinking business, it's in the doing business, exactly like the Delaskis. They think, they do. They think, they do. With respect to the center, Don said, nowadays there is more of an interest in students in going to college to help others and to make a difference in the world. But he goes on to say, but to help others, we have to first be able to help ourselves to find a deeper meaning in life. And the center can do just that, he then says. Part of our vision is that the success of the new center will lead to other universities providing similar courses, doing similar research, and thus providing a higher level of consciousness that may develop not only in the U.S., but far beyond. And what does Nancy say? Nancy says, the world is changing so rapidly. And old days, ways are operating, our old ways of operating are unraveling. My God. We didn't think that a year ago. We think of it today. Old ways of operating are unraveling. She then says, the younger generation needs more inspiration and understanding in their everyday lives, hopefully by studying cons consciousness in the context of transformation, these students will attain more purpose-driven lives and thereby ultimately affect the world future in many fields, medicine, government, research, and world peace. The university appreciates at the highest level what the Lasky's have done for us and what they are doing for us. They are continuing to help us make George Mason the university that we want it to be. Every day at George Mason is, is, a, is a new day. I love this place, but one of the things I like most about it is that when I go out and travel around the city, around the country, around the world, I always have stories to tell that are less than 72 hours old. <laughs> there is always something happening here. Today, this is happening here. Friends of, the George, of George Mason, members of the George Mason community, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Delaskis. And now it's my privilege to ask Don to come up and say a few words. Don and Nancy, thank you so much.
why this is not what I expected. <laughs> I'm an accountant by career, and we don't get much, we don't, we're not much for speech making <laughs> to our entrance. But uh, thank you so much for one thing I got to do, I got to mention something about Mark Thurston here. Uh, I uh, had known Mark for about 30 years. I was very active in, in the uh, uh, Edgar Casey Foundation, and uh, Mark has worked there for about 30 years. And uh, in the last four or five years, I've uh, gotten more involved with a lot of Mark's seminars and so forth, and uh, there's been a lot of, uh, he's written about 19 books or something like that. Worked with Atlantic University, having a connection with the ARE. And so we were uh, together one uh, evening and after a seminar I had, and I just said to Mark, you know, why don't we teach things like this at the university level? Wouldn't that be incredible? <laughs> and uh, he said, gee, you're right. So he got right to work on it, and he started writing up some ideas and some possible uh, course material and so forth. And then I contacted uh, Dr. Merton, and I uh, mentioned to him something of the ideas. And so he, he gave me the, the names and addresses of uh, Peter Stearns and Mark Spencer, and uh, then we got started. And that was about a year and a half ago, something like that. And I just feel that uh, this thing has been inspired by angels, by God, Holy Spirit, whatever. Because everything happens so fast. And everybody that Mark would uh, uh, have, can come up to Mark and they want to get involved. And uh, uh, then Mark uh, quit his job down there and offered to uh, Come up here, so even it's affecting your life too, because uh, and angels seem to work that way. You know, they bring people together to do things, and that's certainly the case here. And all of you seem to have uh, come here also to get involved, and uh, not just to welcome a center, but just to want to get involved, want to have fun. <laughs> we have a lot of fun, <laughs> and. Uh, this, I certainly am having a so, I think too uh, that uh, I, I was going to read uh, something that my wife wrote, but uh, the same thing you read, so I won't read it again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, so I want to. I want to. Uh, had a very interesting experience this past weekend. Uh, Mark was having a, a course uh, with, uh, uh, his, his name was Jam Mahood, I believe. And uh, he used to be the president of Ecuador. And he's a peace, uh, Nobel Peace nominee. And he was here teaching this course that Mark got set up. Mark has been a friend of his for, for many, many years. And so, uh, Jamel, he uh, described a problem he had. He had to try to negotiate uh, some kind of a peace settlement with the president of Peru. And he asked the students to help him uh, get set up for this. Uh, how would they strategize this thing? And these students uh, gave him ideas, and he said, yeah, but this, and they go back and forth. And, then we broke up into three groups, of which I was one of them. One of them, and uh, it was very exciting. And then Mark told me the other day that uh, uh, he was going to send me some of the papers that the students wrote, and I'm really looking forward to getting them because uh, it's, it's just a, a neat thing that uh, such an interesting course would uh, would, would come about. So, uh, in closing, I just want to say that uh, all of you are here to get involved, and uh, it's, it's so neat that uh, I think this whole thing could only have happened at George Mason, I think. 
and all the things that my wife and I have done, things just get to get, happen quickly. None of, you don't have to go to a lot of red tape to make things happen. <laughs> and I think that's a unique thing about George Mason. And we've had a lot of fun with you guys, and uh, we're going to have a lot more. So thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. 